In December 2019, the IFRIC issued an agenda decision. And this agenda decision addresses determining lease term. This is a very important agenda decision because it relates to a matter that's been widely debated for a long period of time. In Australia, this agenda decision has an impact on two practical issues in particular. The first one is holdover leases or month-to-month -month leases. Let me explain. Some entities enter into leases for a term of, let's say, three years, and after the three years, the lease contract allows for them to stay in that property um, during a holdover period. And during that holdover period, the leases can be cancelled by the lessor or the lessee with, let's say, a month notice. So how do we determine the lease term in that scenario? In particular, when we entered into that lease and we've also made leasehold improvements with an expected useful life of 10 years, is the lease term the original agreed term of three years or is the lease term potentially the 10 years? And this is an area of great debate, very relevant in Australia, and we see it in a number of lease agreements. In this article, we look at a number of scenarios and try and clarify the answer. The other matter that's very important and practical in Australia is the matter of what do we do with undocumented leases? How do we determine lease term if we've got an undocumented lease? And is it a lease in the first place? It's important to remember that a lease could be in a written format. It could be verbal or it could be implied. This is particularly re relevant in groups of entities where there's an undocumented or maybe a verbal or implied lease between a parent entity and a subsidiary. This article will be very useful and provide pra practical guidance on interpreting and applying this agenda decision.